Balloon 10.3 The Instructional Process Today, we're delving into the teaching process, a crucial facet of effective aviation instruction. Now, effective teaching is built on the bedrock of learning principles we've discussed earlier. As we delve into the intricacies, bear in mind that the learning process isn't neatly compartmentalized. It's a spectrum, ranging from almost instantaneous comprehension to knowledge honed through persistent study and practice. Now, turning our attention to the teaching process, it's commonly parsed into steps. While opinions vary on the precise number, a common thread unites different perspectives. Teaching new material boils down to preparation, presentation, application, and review and evaluation. As we embark on this pedagogical journey, it's vital to remember that aviation training should encompass more than the mere mechanics of flying. It's not just about the how-to of executing maneuvers. We must go beyond and explore the why behind each action, fostering a profound understanding of the flight process among our students. Let's initiate this process with preparation. Each lesson demands meticulous planning, encapsulated in a comprehensive lesson plan. This plan outlines objectives, procedures, facilities, goals, and review and evaluation methods. Additionally, it extends to include home study and other preparatory tasks for the student. Ensuring that all necessary supplies, materials, and equipment are readily available and operational is fundamental. The lesson plan might draw from the syllabus, practical test standards, PTS, or preprinted forms by training material publishers, all aimed at achieving specific objectives that structure the overall instructional plan. Transitioning to performance-based objectives, a cornerstone in crafting effective lesson plans. These objectives, rooted in the syllabus or PTS, establish clear, measurable standards for student performance. Adopting that DAM principle, making objectives difficult, attainable, and measurable, guides the instructor in creating impactful objectives. This aligns with behavioral objectives, encapsulating the desired behavior or performance of the student. Performance-based objectives break down into three essential components, a description of the skill or behavior, conditions, and criteria. This triad provides a nuanced understanding, ensuring a uniform perception of the objective, how it's executed, and the expected performance level. The utilization of performance-based objectives serves a dual purpose. It not only aids instructors in guiding the learning journey but also offers students a comprehensive overview. This holistic perspective alleviates potential frustrations, enriching the overall learning experience. So, in this instructional landscape, we're not merely disseminating information, we're crafting an immersive learning experience that goes beyond the surface, providing students with a profound understanding of aviation principles and practices. Now, let's explore the diverse methods instructors employ for presentation, each tailored to the nature of the subject matter and the teaching objectives. Firstly, we have the lecture method, ideal for presenting new material, summarizing ideas, and illustrating theory-practice relationships. For instance, it suits a ground school lesson on performance planning, especially when complemented by instructional aids like chalkboards or marker boards. Next up is the demonstration performance method, apt for imparting skills, such as teaching flight maneuvers. Imagine instructing a student pilot on executing a steep descent. The instructor would first demonstrate the maneuver, allowing the student to follow suit. Another approach is the guided discussion, valuable in classroom settings. It encourages active student participation, proving effective for subjects like safety and emergency procedures, where students can use initiative and imagination to address challenges. Moving on to the crucial phase of review and application. Application is where students put into practice what the instructor has presented. After a classroom presentation, students may explain new material or perform a demonstrated procedure. Instructors often alternate their explanation and demonstration activities with student performance efforts, ensuring corrections and guidance when needed. Establishing correct habits from the start is paramount, as they are challenging to rectify once ingrained. Let's delve into teaching methods. Departing from theoretical concepts, we now provide specific recommendations for the teaching process. Effective organization of material is key, emphasizing the importance of a systematic plan of action within a logical training syllabus. The syllabus must encompass lesson descriptions, objectives, and completion standards. The lesson plan structure typically comprises introduction, development, and conclusion. The introduction, crucial in setting the stage, comprises attention, motivation, and an overview of the content. Attention is captivated through storytelling, surprising statements, questions, or jokes, all relevant to the subject. 
Motivation follows, elucidating why the lesson content holds significance for the students. Lastly, the overview offers a roadmap of what lies ahead during the lesson. Now, let's focus on development, the crux of the lesson, where the instructor logically organizes material, demonstrating relationships between main points. This can be achieved through various structures, past to present, simple to complex, known to unknown, and most to least frequently used. Subordinate points should flow logically, leading from one to the other, with meaningful transitions aiding comprehension. Finally, the conclusion is a vital component, summarizing key elements and relating them to the objective. This reinforcement enhances student learning and retention. It's essential to refrain from introducing new ideas in the conclusion, as they might confuse students. In conclusion, effective organization, coupled with a nuanced understanding of teaching methods, maximizes the opportunity for students to grasp and retain information. The choice of teaching method is context-dependent, influenced by the setting and purpose of the lesson. Let's delve into the lecture method, a widely employed form of presentation, crucial for every instructor to master. This method proves versatile, serving various purposes such as introducing new subjects, summarizing ideas, illustrating theory-practice relationships, and reinforcing main points. Suitable for both small and large groups, lectures can initiate a unit of instruction or an entire training program. Moreover, combining lectures with other teaching methods enhances comprehension. Now, the lecture method is highly adaptable and can take various forms. For instance, the illustrated talk involves heavy reliance on visual aids to convey ideas effectively. In a briefing, the speaker presents a concise array of facts without delving into supporting material. A formal lecture, on the other hand, primarily aims to inform, persuade, or entertain, with minimal verbal participation from the students. Lastly, the teaching lecture involves planned oral presentations, allowing student participation to guide them toward the desired learning outcomes. It's essential for instructors to be flexible when employing the lecture method. A dry run with another instructor can be beneficial to gauge the feel of the lecture presentation. Whether it's an illustrated talk, briefing, formal lecture, or teaching lecture, each type demands a nuanced approach tailored to the specific context and desired outcomes.